In this video, we are going to write to a Google Sheets document by using the Python API. Just like most of the Google APIs, Google Sheets uses uh, OAuth for authentication, meaning that you need to create an app, register it with Google, and then uh, you can perform actions like reading and writing on behalf of users, but they need to authorize your app on a consent page. In uh, this video, we are going to authorize a single user ourselves. If you want to publish your app on the internet and support multiple users, the setup is a bit more complicated. You will need a database to store the tokens. Uh, maybe I will uh, make a separate video in the future. Um, all the source code and URLs will be linked in the video description below. And if you want to support the channel, please like the video or uh, consider subscribing. Thank you. This is the documentation page that we will follow in this video. I will link it in the video description below. And I also have um, an empty Visual Studio Code um, project where we will um, write our Python code. So the first step in here is to um, create our app and register it with uh, Google Cloud. So you will need to have a Google Cloud project created for this and a Google Cloud account. Once you have that, you can go to console.google.cloud, console.cloud.google.com. And in the search bar, just search for uh, services and APIs. Let's see. Uh, the other way, APIs and services. So in here, um, we we need to create the OAuth uh, consent page. Let's say, uh, yeah, we will uh, create it as internal. Oh, it says we need to create it as external. That's fine. App name, uh, let's call it uh, Sheets uh, Quick Start. We need to enter our email in here. We can up upload the logos and so on and also our email again for contact information we can uh, save it very good and now we go to credentials and we need to create a new credentials the type will be OAuth client ID application type will be a desktop app the name will be, let's call it again, Sheets Quick Start. This name, I don't think, will be displayed anywhere. Uh, the thing that users will see will be this OAuth consent screen. So we can create this app. And now we can uh, download the credentials file. So we'll do download.json. And um, we will download it in our Visual Studio Code project in here. And we need to we need to name it as uh, credentials that json credentials credentials.json save it and uh, we see it here it was downloaded next we will uh, go back to the documentation page so the next step is to install all these uh, python dependencies so in our in our project we can create a requirements file so requirements that txt and um, we will copy these three requirements uh, move them to separate lines also save the file and uh, once the file is saved we can create a new python environment in here and uh, yeah i use this button in visual studio code if um, if you're not using Visual Studio Code, you can create a, a virtual environment from the terminal. So yeah, I will base that on three Python 3.11. I think it said in the document that we need at least Python 3.10. So this one will be good. And uh, yeah, while they are being installed, we can... Um, th there's this uh, sample code that we will uh, start with and we will adapt. So let's create our uh, main.python file. And um, 
in here if we save it so we can we can take a look at um, this uh, document really quick so here is the what permissions we are asking for uh, our users here uh, in, in this code they only read from a spreadsheet so they ask for the read only scopes but in our case we will also need the write permission so we need to edit this one just put it like spreadsheets without read only and then if we look in um in the main file so first they check if uh, there's a token.json file present so this file will be created after the user approved our app in the consent screen and in our case right now we don't have the token.json and um, so if it exists it, it just uses the the credentials from that uh, file otherwise otherwise if the token expired then it will be refreshed and if we don't have a token file which is our case then uh, it will start uh, it, it will actually start a local server on a port just for the Google API to redirect to that server and then it will write the token.json to to that file so this is the um, authentication part in our script and once we're authenticated they uh, just uh, read from the um, they print some data from a spreadsheet that is public so we can uh, try running this uh, script let's see what happens so in here it identified that uh, we have not authorized our uh, app uh, right now and um, it opens this uh, web browser with the this is the consent page and we need to sign in into our Google account. We, we can see here this is the consent page that we created earlier. This is the name we provided in the in Google Cloud. So in uh, in here in OAuth consent screen, this is the Sheets Quick Start. So we can see it right there. And uh, here I log in. Okay, it looks like uh, our app got blocked by Google and uh, I think the workaround for this is to go to the um, APIs and services again. So in the OAuth consent screen, we can add ourselves as a test user. .gmail.com um, Yeah, we, it, need, it needs to pass the Google verification and um, so we can uh, we can try again now. We'll close this page and uh, let's kill the script and now if we run it again let's see with um, uh, yeah it says we've been we've been given access because we're using it as testing and now if we continue we it, it says here uh, what um, what permission the app is asking. It says see, edit, create, delete all Google Sheet spreadsheets, which is correct. We click on continue. So here, if, if we take a look at the URL, it will say that um, we, we will see that it says localhost 40423, which is a pretty random port, but this is the, this is the server that was created from this line, flow, uh, this one flow run local server and now if we take a look at our project we see that it uh, created this file token token.json which means that um, the this these are the credentials that were generated from the user after um, we went through the consent screen now if we look at the output of our script we see that there was another error in here it says that google sheets api has not been used in this project uh, before or is it it is disabled so we can um, we can go to this URL and then um, and and enable the Google Sheets API so yeah and here we just click enable okay very good and now if we run our script again we will see that it actually output it, it it actually printed some data to the console and um, if we take a look at the code that is uh, after the authentication part we see that 
it uh, does sheet that values it from this spreadsheet ID and a range of uh, rows. So if we take take a look at these values, there's this uh, spreadsheet ID that we can open. So if we do, I think it's docs.google.com. Yeah, that one spreadsheet uh, spreadsheet slash d, and then we paste this uh, ID from the Python file. This is the spreadsheet that the starter Python code is using. So we can see in here that it, it is printing the columns A and E. So it's A and then the fifth one E and it says Alexandra, English, Andrew, Math, which are these lines from here, Alexandra, English, Andrew, Math and uh, so on. Next, we will uh, modify our code to write to a new spreadsheet. So we don't we don't have uh, write permissions to this one because it's published by Google. So we we need to create a new one. So in my in my Google Drive, I'll create a new spreadsheet. Um, let's call this one uh, Sheets API Write. We don't need the name; it's not important. So in here, we'll have two columns, let's say first name and last name. And uh, we'll just need this ID from here that we will copy. Uh, for, for you, it will be different. So if you, if you get the code from um, GitHub and you, you'll need to change this ID in your, in your code. In here, we override the spreadsheet ID and now um, if we go back to the documentation page here on the left it will be section will with the read and write cell values and um, in here i think there's a there's a section with appending values yeah this one which i will also link in the description below we can uh, take a look at the differences between our code and um, what this one is doing. So actually the, um, the, the code after, after we do the authentication, which, you, which we already have, these are the lines that are actually writing the, um, the values. So we're gonna transfer these ones. Let's say, from here so instead of uh, getting the values and printing them we no longer need this part and uh, in here the spreadsheet id is the um, yeah the sample spreadsheet id value let's say sample spreadsheet id range name so this one will be the um, from uh, the cell a2 to b just two two columns value input option i think this is user they are doing um, user entered yeah we'll do the same one let's say here user entered and uh, the body will just be values and then in here the values will be um, will be a list of rows and each row is an uh, array is also a list with the cell values so we'll modify the main file and we'll have the first name in here and the uh, last name. So in here in the values, we'll just have first name and last name. Just, uh, yeah, just one row is fine. And now uh, we can test it with um, with two values so let's see yeah we, we don't need to print the result it's fine and um yeah hopefully hopefully it will run let's um, start it okay and now if we go to our google sheet we can see that it actually added the row now we can also make it a bit more generic to uh, get data from the um, uh, command line arguments. So in here, we if we import system sys, so in here we can pass um, 
system arguments, the first argument, and then system arguments of two. We save this file. So now if we do Python, you have to make sure you have your virtual environment activated. So if we do Python main.py and we do Bob uh, Bobson and we go to our Google Drive, we see that it added a new line and we can do one more. John Doe. And we see again that it added, so it's uh, very nice. That's it for today. There are more videos with tools and APIs if you want to continue watching. And if you have any questions or you run into issues, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.